Well, howdy, New Spring. It's that time again. Can you believe that 2012 is behind us? And we have seen so much happen in our church. In fact, we've got so much to celebrate. One of the things we love to do every year is celebrate the previous year so we can anticipate the next year. And man, we, just to just a recap really quick, we've got a lot to celebrate this year. We've seen God do so much in our church. We, uh, we were named one of the 20 largest and fastest growing churches in the United States by Outreach Magazine. We've had over 1.6 million people visit our website, newspring.cc, from 186 different countries. We've seen over 2,700 people go public in baptism this year. We've seen over 4,500 people receive Christ. I mean, I could go on and on and on about this, but it's 2012 has been an amazing year. And I want to I want to I just want to start this time together by reflecting back on we started in January with our worship band releasing a project and here's Lee to tell you a little bit about that. The core values of New Spring Church are we believe that found people find people, save people, serve people. Growing people change. You can't do life alone and you can't outgive God. And, uh, you know, we just believe that New Spring is a church where change takes place. That's, that's New Spring's vision statement. And so the vision behind every New Spring worship service emerges from that. This year, God's given us this great opportunity to occupy uh, this wonderful studio in downtown Greenville. We were able to produce five different projects this year. You know, specifically the Noah the Name project that we did at the beginning of the year. That was our, our main worship record that we did this year. It was full of songs that we've been singing for a little while and, and saw some original music that we had just come up with for that project. And, and uh, that was, it, it was a real you know, awesome experience to be able to do that with worship leaders from all over the state who are a part of New Spring. It was truly a one church, many locations project. It, it's kind of a, a calling card for New Spring is that we're going to be a little bit edgy in our worship service. and, and we, we never do that just to be cool. That is not the point for any time we would do a really big rock and roll number that you would hear um, on the radio or something like that. The point is always to engage outsiders. To give you one, one story specifically, um, back in August as we're preparing for our Salvation Sunday, um, you know, as we're creating that moment, we just really felt that we needed to lead off with a Kiss song. I, um, I want to rock and roll all night and party every day. So um, it, it was kind of a joke there for a little bit, but we thought, okay, this is really what we need to do and felt like the Holy Spirit was leading us to do that song. And so we put it in there, everybody rocked it, it was great. And uh, then a few weeks later, we hear the story of a guy named Jeff who came to Columbia, very skeptical. Um, it played in a bunch of cover bands back in Vegas where he used to live. And um, he came in there and when he heard the band crank up that song, on Sunday. Some walls came down for him. He was blown away. His heart was opened up. And when Perry preached the gospel to him, he received Christ. He became a new person. He was changed on that day. I really believe this year was an incredible year for us, but that we have not seen even this much of what God wants to do through our church. We are going to reach 100,000 people. We just believe it with our whole hearts. Like Perry says, the best is yet to come. In February of this year, we took a hard look at a very serious subject, worry, stress, fear, anxiety, and depression. And I actually spoke to the church about my battle with depression and, and what that looked like. And we were absolutely amazed at the number of people that, that really do struggle with this and how the church has kind of ignored it for years, but we hit it head on and we saw a lot of people um, come forward and say, you know what, I'm struggling with this too. And here's a little bit of what that looked like. If we want to get out of the state of feeling overwhelmed, you can't run from it anymore. You've got to address it, and address it means admitting that you have a problem. You know what keeps people from doing that? Because you know what kept me from doing it for three years? Good old-fashioned pride. Easter services were, in, in my opinion, the best Easter services we've ever had. We did, um, uh, the Easter service was called Mirror, Mirror. And in it, we talked about being new creations in Christ. Um, I actually got to break a mirror on stage. That was a lot of fun. And at the end of the service, we had people that prayed to receive Christ walk forward and sign their names on the mirror indicating that they had prayed to receive Christ. 
And honestly, it was one of the most moving services we've ever had. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. And the old is gone and the new has come. And all across the front of the stage, we have mirrors. I want you to sign your name. I want you to look at yourself. I want you to sign your name in that mirror, indicating that today you crossed over from death to life. You became a brand new person. One of the most fun things and interesting things we did this year was the whole Eve and Adam, Adam and Eve series. We did Adam and Eve in the spring where I, we talked about biblical manhood and we did Eve and Adam in the fall where we talked about biblical womanhood. We had a lot of fun with it, but we saw record attendance in our church because relationships between men and women, they really, really, really do matter to God. God is the one who came up with the whole idea of men and women getting together and getting married. And so we took a look at it as a church and it was so much fun. The reason our nation is having many of the problems that we're having has nothing to do with who's in political office and it has nothing to do with the educational system per se or it has nothing to do with the financial situation. I think many of the problems that our nation is having can be traced back to men simply refusing to step up and be men. My, my prayer for every lady here today is that you would challenge or that you would change from finding your identity in your circumstances to finding your identity in a relationship with God through Christ. Because Christ trumps circumstances every time. One of the things that we started saying around um, here, probably back in January, we started saying a lot, is every number has a name. In fact, let's do this together, all of our campuses. Every number has a name. Every name has a story, right? And every story matters to God, exactly. Every, I mean, that, that's just one of those um, things that's in our vocabulary. And one of the things we love to do at New Spring Church is celebrate the stories because every story, I mean, every person really does have a story in their life. And this year we've had some powerful videos um, where people shared their story. And just listen, just through the services where we've seen stories shared about how Jesus changed people's lives, over 700 people have received Christ just by watching the video of a person that says, hey, this is who I was and Jesus changed me and now I'm a brand new person. And it, it's, been, it's been amazing. And, so, and these, are, these, are just, uh, these are just a few of the stories that we've shared with our church this year that have, that have meant so much to, to our family. Jake's stroke caught everybody by surprise. It was a terrible thing. We felt God's presence through His people. Uh, and amongst this turmoil, there's been a, a, a boatload of blessings. Uh, but we know, and Jake knows, through Jesus and the hope that He provides, um, there will be better days ahead. So I screamed in my head, not out loud. I was too afraid to say anything out loud, but I just screamed in my head. I had my fists clenched and I just screamed, God, would you make him leave? And before I knew it, he had turned completely 180 degrees around and walked out of my room. And I just thought, God is real. Um, so right there in the stands, I gave my life to Jesus and gave him my everything, my past, my present, my future, my trust and control issues, and just to live for Him, whatever that meant. Um, and I made that decision right there in the stands at that moment. We're going to reach 100,000 people for Christ. It's, it's something that our church is laser focused on. That's our vision. And we've, we've called the initiative of reaching 100,000 people take the land. When Joshua and the Israelites were marching through and they were getting ready to go into Israel, God didn't say, go ask them, can you have the land? God told the Israelites, you go take the land. So back in May, we did a vision night where I was able to spend some time at, at most of the campuses. We talked about commitment and we talked about what it looks like when a church really gets fired up about the vision God has and what it looks like when we together work um, and do all we can to take the land. 
I want what God was doing yesterday rather than what God is doing today. And they went out and they started looking for the manna. You know what would happen to those people? They would have starved to death. And that's what happens sometimes to churches is they get so focused on what God did yesterday, they don't want to look at what God's doing today and they starve to death and they shut down when God's saying, hey, yes, celebrate the fact that I was faithful in the desert, but look at what I want to do in the promised land right now because when you focus your eyes on what I want to do just instead of what I did, you'll step into what I want for your life and your church. We did a series this summer called Weird, and we kind of kicked that whole thing off by me announcing that I was going to take a break. Um, And when I say a break, not a week or two, but I I literally was gone out of the um, pulpit for like eight or nine weeks, and um, and I I, like I I was just gone. I was just away. I didn't even attend New Spring Church for six weeks. And um, a lot of people wonder about, okay, what would happen to New Spring Church if? Uh, Perry got hit by a bus and I always say it depends on the size of a bus. I'm a big guy. I can take most buses But let's say I got taken out by a bus Um, We got a picture this past summer of what would happen to our church because during that time period our church grew um, The giving increased and and we saw between four and five hundred people over the summer when the senior pastor wasn't even here give their lives to Christ Um, one of the most powerful things that happened this summer was um, Caleb White spoke. Caleb is actually a product of our Fuse ministry. And seeing him on stage preaching the gospel was a reminder to me that the next generation is getting ready to step into leadership. And it, it was just so powerful. And you get to whatever road, you get to the end of that road and it's completely empty. You have nothing that does nothing for you. And it's because every person in this room Every person across every campus at our church was created to be satisfied by Jesus alone. It's not Jesus and it's not Jesus or it's it's Jesus. You're satisfied by God, by Jesus and what he has done for you or you're not satisfied. Well, I came back from sabbatical and um, it was it was just it was so much fun. Me, Me and my family got away to uh, you know beach and stuff like that and I came back and people were like you don't have a tan it, it's because I don't tan I can't tan I don't tan I'm as white as they come call me Casper whatever you need to do that's just it but we stepped back into a really fun series like I said called house party and it was it was a it was about a month of just anticipating what was going to happen building up to August 26 in fact um, on August 24th and on August 25th our church gathered together in a couple locations for a night of worship and August 24th we were in Columbia and August 25th we were in Greenville at the Bilo Center and we just got together and we prayed and we worshiped um, in anticipation of what God was going to do and on the next on the next day on Sunday August 26th we did a message where um, I preached the gospel and people came down at the end if they prayed to receive Christ and nailed their names to the cross and 1,251 people actually got out of their seat came down nailed their name to the cross it was one of the most powerful weekends in the history of our church after that huge salvation push one of the things that we love to talk about here at New Spring Church is baptism baptism is the next step that we're all called to take after we receive Christ it's us going public and so on September 2nd I preached a message um, on going public and why that's necessary in fact we used the um, the question what are you waiting for out of Acts chapter 22 verse 16 and we challenged people we said hey in two weeks from th- that particular day we're gonna baptize and we're gonna challenge you to to go ahead and get signed up um, on the ninth of the week after we had Gary Snozel from um, Freedom Church in Harryford England a church we support he preached and on that weekend we also pushed baptism and then on the 16th we said hey th- today's the day we're baptizing it was a big celebration and 1,451 people across the state of South Carolina went public for Jesus and uh, man it's just something that still pumps me up after that there was a series we did called unleash and it was um it was personal to me because during that series uh, we released um, the book Unleash. Um, it, they, I mean, it, opening week it hit number time, number two on the New York Times bestseller. A little bit of surprise. Um, there's a whole story behind that, and maybe I'll share it with the church another time. But uh, that was a that was an incredibly fun series to preach through. And and here's just a couple things that you'll probably remember from that. 
You can bury water in the ground for 100 years, come back. What's it going to be in 100 years? Water. What's it going to be in 1,000 years? Water. Water cannot become wine unless the, unless the supernatural is involved. On the outside, these two lives look the same. Everything looks the same. Jesus is not talking about external appearances, which we've been way too obsessed with in the church for far too long. Jesus said if we build our foundation on the rock, because the storm's coming here. The storm's coming. And the storm's coming here. The only difference is this has a solid foundation. This don't. This stands in the storm. This always falls. If you force me to pick a favorite series of the entire year, it would, it would be fully alive. Um, it, it was just, for, for me, it was fun to teach through. I think it was fun for our church as we went through um, Luke 15. We spent about three weeks just in Luke 15 talking about um, the lost sheep, the lost coin, the lost, and both lost sons. And we, we discovered that lost things really do matter to God. Um, in that, we did our Christmas services, which were, in, in my opinion, the, the best ever. And um, this is just a, a little bit of what my favorite series of the year looked like. If you're tired of feeling like this right here spiritually, most likely it's because you're like this right here. But if you ask Christ into your life, you can go to this right here and be made into a brand new person. So when it comes to the concept of, of church, you've got, the, you've got the big C church, and then you've got the, the small C church. Now, the small C church is the local church and all believers um, everywhere ac across the, the globe are um, commanded in scripture to, to be a part of a, of a small c church to be a part of a local body of believers it's something that we're all called to but as christians we're all a part of the big c church it's the global church it's far beyond the local church it's it's all over the world and, and and New Spring is very involved. I mean, we're all about the, the small C church, the local church, but we're also very involved in the big C church, the global church. And over the past several years, that involvement has gotten more and more. And I mean, it's just built more and more momentum. And, and here's just a small part of what involvement in the big C church for our church looks like. Hi, New Spring. I'm Corey Cooper, and I have the opportunity to serve on the Unleashed Ministries team here at New Spring Church. The vision of Unleashed Ministries is to serve, equip, and encourage the local church. We're able to accomplish this goal in many ways, through conferences and events, and through local and foreign partnerships. In March, we hosted the One Day Unleashed Conference, where we saw over 2,800 church leaders on our Anderson campus. Our guests were able to hear from our senior pastor and learn from our different areas of ministry on what the Lord has taught us in the past 12 years. In September, we hosted seven guest speakers at our New Spring Leadership Conference, a full day of leadership teaching and encouragement from some of the nation's greatest church leaders, including our pastor. Additionally, because of your generosity, this past year as a church, we have had the opportunity to give $1.8 million to missions. In our communities, we have had the opportunity to partner with local schools all across our state and put shoes on over 4,400 children's feet this Christmas. Our connections across the globe are remarkable. We are currently partnering with four different churches in four different places. Resonate Church was founded by Davey Blackburn in April 2012. Davey was previously on staff at our New Spring Greenville campus and felt led to plant a church in Indianapolis, Indiana. At Freedom Church, Pastor Gary and Heather Snozel are leading the charge with campuses in Hereford, Cardiff, Uganda, Belgium, and Cambodia. They are fighting for the Big C Church and the advancement of the gospel.
3D Church in Estonia is led by 23-year-old Jacob Rimmel. In an area where one out of 10 youth think church is relevant to their lives, Jacob and his team are willing to take a stand for Christ. Shemin Sasson is a native Israeli Messianic church located in the business district of Jerusalem. In April of this year, we had the opportunity to partner with faith-based expeditions and travel with 200 people to Israel. Four years ago, we began our partnership with 410 Bridge in the Sagira area of Kenya, Africa. Over 5,000 people now have access to safe water through the water projects New Spring Church has funded in Sagira. Our medical and dental teams have impacted over 10,000 patients, including the people of Sagira and outside communities. Thank you, New Spring. Because you give, we are blessed with the opportunity to serve, equip, and encourage the local church. One of the things that we've always valued here at New Spring Church is investing in the next generation. Um, I remember going to church, as many of you do, as, as children, and for most of us, our experience was, oh my gosh, God must be boring because this is his house, and I don't want to go to his house because there's no fun in his house. And so, um, I, I just, at, the more I read the scriptures, the more I see that Jesus promised abundant life, and it wasn't, um, hey, I'm going to promise you abundant life once you become old enough in a church to tithe. I believe abundant life is promised to people that that follow Christ. And so we made the decision early as a church that we were gonna invest in the next generation, meaning we're gonna invest in a healthy children's ministry, um, which is what we have in Kids Spring, and we're gonna invest in a healthy student ministry, which, which is what we see in our, our Fuse ministry. And here's uh, just some snapshots and some thoughts about those two ministries as they've taken place in our church this year. Hey everyone, my name is Sherry Duffy, and I would love to tell you all about what's been happening at Kids Spring in 2012. It's crazy to think about, but this past year, we have been averaging around 3,500 kids each Sunday. Having that many kids is so great because each one of them gets to experience the best day of their week in Kids Spring while learning about Jesus on their level. It takes the heart and passion of over 1,200 volunteers to make our values of safety, creative Bible teaching, age appropriateness, relationships, and fun a priority the minute that kids walk through our doors. If you've had an opportunity to talk to a child who's been in Kids Spring, you know we've had a year full of some really great series. Some of our kids' most memorable ones were Pirates, Off the Rails, At the Movies, and Heroes. With each series, we taught one main point, or as we like to call it, our need to know and one story from the Bible that helps us understand how a spiritual truth could be applied in our lives. We fill each series with fun because fun is the language of kids. In fact, there are two questions we always want kids to answer each week as they leave Kids Spring. The first one is, did you have fun? And the other one is, what did you learn? Parents, you can always let us know how we are doing by asking your kids these questions each Sunday too. Across all of our campuses, we've been able to see our vision of creative Bible teaching happen with live acting, worship, and games in both preschool and elementary school. We know that while kids are in Kids Spring, they get to experience a worship service designed just for them. As our church continues to reach the state of South Carolina, we are seeing more and more families with different stories become a part of our church and be served in ways that they never thought possible. We are so thankful to be one church in many locations doing ministry to every child regardless of their background or need. Not only are we making an impact on kids in our communities, but we begin giving away the curriculum that we make to churches all over the world. They are able to download this curriculum for free and use it to help the kids in their communities experience Jesus on their level too. Thank you, New Spring. There is no doubt that as you continue to give and you continue to serve, there will be one generation after the next who will know who Jesus is. Howdy New Spring Church, Brad Cooper here, FUSE Student Director, and I just wanted to tell you at FUSE, we believe that the Lord has taught us from our youth, and so even to old age and gray hairs, we want to tell the next generation about the goodness of Jesus Christ, about all that He has done, and let His glory be seen in the next generation. If you spend any time at New Spring Church, you've probably heard us say that we believe that every number has a name, every name has a story, and every story matters to God. So I just want to quickly share with you some stories that we believe matter to the Lord in 2000. 
2012 in the FUSE student ministry. So let's back up and let's pick it up last year into the school year with the FUSE summer kickoff. That's kind of our end of school year event. We saw nearly 4,000 students come along to the FUSE summer kickoff on one of our campuses and nearly 290 students made professions of faith that night and professed Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. That momentum spilled right over into the summertime and we saw some incredible stuff highlighted by the Gauntlet Summer Camp where we took 2,700 volunteers and students down to Daytona Beach, Florida and we for a week just focused on Jesus, who He is, what He's done in our lives and God did some incredible things. 240 students made professions of faith at the Gauntlet Summer Camp. 501 of those students went forward in baptism professing to the whole world that Jesus Christ was their Lord and Savior and they came back to all of our cities, all of our campuses and the momentum just spilled over into our church where we saw some awesome things this fall. Uh, started off with a, a first campus launch in Spartanburg where our few student ministry on our sixth campus happened and God's done some incredible things in just a few short months over in Spartanburg and then again this fall we saw momentum the whole fall long averaging out to over 1,600 students at FUSE every single week. Over 6,500 students came to FUSE in the last year for the very first time, which is an incredible, incredible thing. We're seeing found people do find people, and our students believe that, inviting their friends to come along with them to FUSE. I wanted to also tell you that currently 900 students, 2012, 900 students have gone forward in a profession of faith, uh, asking Jesus Christ to be their Lord and Savior, and God is not done yet. The best is yet to come, New Spring Church, and we know that, we believe that. I wanted to close with really just an idea that we've seen God do some incredible things at Fuse, where we're not doing ministry for students this year, we're doing ministry with students. And God has allowed many students to lead their friends to Christ outside of the, the walls of our Fuse gathering. We've heard stories about small groups gathering and a friend getting led to the Lord. We've heard stories about a friend driving another friend down the road and begin to having questions about who Jesus is and what he's done, pulling over on the side of the road and right then and there a friend leading a friend to Christ. In addition, we've seen students baptizing a friend as, as over the weekend someone has professed Jesus Christ to be their Lord and Savior and is so exciting about declaring that publicly that friends and family members are called and a student baptizing one of their friends in a lake just on a weekend. It's truly, again, we're not doing ministry for students, we're doing ministry with students and we believe the best is yet to come. Our ceiling really is the next generation's floor and so right now I just wanted to close my time by saying thank you. Thank you to all of you who have given and invested in the students of the next generation at New Spring Church. Whether that's been giving of your time, volunteering, going to the gauntlet, serving at Fuse, or giving your tithe every single week. You are making a difference, New Spring Church. The best is yet to come. Thank you for pouring into the next generation. Back in 2008, we launched a campus in, in Greenville, it was a multi-site campus, and we were like, hey, does this thing work? Will this thing work? Will people actually show up and watch a video? And here we are several years later, eight campuses across the state of South Carolina, and man, I, I could talk about it all day, but actually I want to turn it over uh, to my friend Michael, who's going to tell you a little bit more about that. Hey everyone, I'm Michael Brown, and I have the privilege and honor of working with our campus pastors all across the state of South Carolina. This year in 2012, we launched three new campuses in Myrtle Beach, Spartanburg, and in Greenwood. Those three campuses are averaging collectively about 3,500 people per Sunday. That brings our total of campuses up to eight campuses all across the state of South Carolina. You know, each Sunday is someone's very first time attending a New Spring campus. Additionally, each Sunday, life change happens and takes place at every single New Spring campus. I'm reminded of a young guy that I met in Florence about a year ago by the name of Chad Logan. Chad came to Florence to attend a drug and alcohol rehab facility. And Chad first came in, he was brought to New Spring by some friends that he had met there and uh, began to truly learn and grow what it meant to have a true relationship with Jesus. See, he had been saved before, but he had never been baptized, which he took that next step at New Spring Church. He took the next step of getting involved and actually serving. He took the next step to get connected into small group with a group of, of friends in biblical community. He began to continue to take next step after next step. And then God challenged Chad to move back to his hometown after he finished the rehab program. But when he truly committed to do that, he realized that there was already a New Spring campus in his hometown. You see, Chad is from Charleston. So now Chad lives in Charleston. He's sharing the love of Jesus with his family and friends. He's inviting them to church telling them about what it truly means to have a relationship with Jesus, to experience grace and forgiveness. And he also has the opportunity to serve and be involved on Sundays as well as with Fuse on Wednesday nights. 
Chad is just one example of life change and stories that are taking place all across the state at all of our New Spring campuses. We truly are one church in many locations. In 2012, the New Spring Columbia campus has seen tremendous growth. In February of this year, we had to add a 4 p.m. service just to have space to handle the number of people that were coming every single week. That growth continued throughout the summer. And in July, we were averaging close to 2,000 people. So in October of this year, we moved to the Columbia Metropolitan Convention Center to have space for growth while we were waiting to get into our new building. We are so excited about the growth that we've seen and the growth that is gonna to continue to come. 2013 is going to be unbelievable and we truly believe that the best is yet to come. 2012 has been incredible for the Myrtle Beach campus. We've obviously started our campus this year and we've seen people um, just come and get on board with the vision of New Spring Church and really carry this thing out. We have people show up for load in at 4 a.m. and leave it at 2 p.m. just to take the church forward and to see people meet Jesus. We've seen over a hundred people receive Jesus this year alone and we're just getting started. Um, we just did our first huge community outreach project in the city of Myrtle Beach. Uh, we, we put shoes on the feet of close to 600 students at South Conway Elementary and it's just been a huge thing for us to get our first chance to really be the church in the community and be a church that wants to partner with our community to, to meet a, a physical need before we can meet a spiritual need. So it's been a huge momentum booster for us uh, this year and uh, we've just been getting started laying the foundation for what the Lord ultimately wants to do long term in Myrtle Beach and I cannot wait to see what is to come. 2012 has been great but 2013 is going to be even more incredible and the best really is yet to come. We launched the Greenwood campus just a few short weeks ago and have already seen dozens of people meet Jesus. We launched on December 2nd of this year with over 1,500 people and it hasn't slowed down yet. The Lord is doing some incredible things and one of the coolest stories that I've heard is a lady that came to our church with two autistic sons who felt comfortable enough to leave her sons in Spring Zone and she experienced a distraction-free service for the first time since her sons were born. And on the second week they came, when they left, one of her sons cried because he had to leave Kids Spring in Spring Zone, which is absolutely unbelievable. And the Lord has already blessed us so much in Greenwood, and I can't wait to see how many people meet Jesus in Greenwood in 2013 because the best is yet to come. What's up, New Spring Church? My name is Sam Gibson. I'm the Florence Campus Pastor. And this year in 2012 has been one of the best years we've ever had at the Florence Campus. We have seen over 655 people receive Christ. And we know that's important because every number has a name and every name has a story and every story matters to God. Just to give you reference to one of those stories, I met a woman at the beginning of our Fully Alive series a few weeks ago who walked into New Spring Church for the first time. One of her family members has been inviting her for a very long time and she walked in the door and received Christ that day. But what's really special about her story is that she walked in that morning planning on taking her life later that week. That she pretty much had given up on life and just said, well, I've tried out this church they've been inviting me to. And she walked out a new creation in Christ. That is why I love my church. That is why we celebrate what we do. And guys, 2012 has been incredible, but 2013 is gonna be the best year that we've ever seen as a campus and the best year that we've ever seen as a church. I love my church. This past year at the Greenville campus has been absolutely amazing. One of the things we felt like the Lord wanted us to do was to start a 6 p.m. service. Uh, also, we just thought that some people would like to sleep in on Sunday mornings and um, it may work on Sundays. And God really spoke specifically to start a 6 p.m. service this year. He is doing amazing things at that service. Already we're seeing over 650 people show up every single week. Uh, we saw 63 people receive Christ just at that 6 p.m. service. And one particular story that I can think about is a guy that hadn't been to church in his entire life. His family member had been invited for 12 years to come to church. He came to the 6 p.m. service and met Jesus. And that's why we do what we do. So God has done amazing things in 2012, but I believe that the best is yet to come. 2013 is going to be incredible, and I can't wait. It is hard to believe that it's been less than two years since we launched the Charleston campus. To see all that God has done in such a short time is so amazing. We are a portable campus, so we are constantly seeing it lived out that God will build His church. One of the ways we saw that this year is on Easter Sunday morning, we had our power completely knocked out of our building. The crazy thing is God made a way. He still built His church, and we still had church Easter Sunday morning and had over a 1,000 people show up that morning. 
cool thing is, is that morning, a lady walked out of our hotel room because of the loss of power, noticed the parking lot at our venue full, so she decided she'd walk in and see if we had power. As she did, she saw it was a church and was blown away that there were that many people at church. She walked in, and before she left, she was writing her name on a mirror, indicating that she wanted to accept Jesus as her Lord and Savior. Seeing what God has done in such a short time is mind-boggling and blows my mind each and every Sunday. And thinking about what He has to come in year three for us as a campus and in 2013 for us as a church, I cannot wait because I truly believe the best is yet to come. It has been a fantastic year at the Anderson campus and God has done some amazing things. So let me give you a couple of stats. Over 1,500 people have been saved this year and over 1,100 people have been baptized and that never ceases to get old. One of the great stories that have come out of this community this year is that three houses have been built uh, through our partnership with Habitat for Humanity. What we were able to do is to build these three houses in the same community so that one day we're going to be able to build many, many houses on the same street. And I can't wait what, to see what happens with the families that have been given such generous gifts through this church. I cannot believe what God has been able to do in 2012, and I cannot wait to see what He's going to do in 2013. New Springs Sparnberg has had an incredible year. We launched in February, and we've been going for 10 months. Uh, we've seen a 66% percent, a percent increase in attendance, going from 900 when we launched to an average of 1,500 in the fall. We've seen over 400 people meet Jesus this year at New Springs Spartanburg alone. One of those people was a volunteer's brother that he had been praying for for years. And he finally came to New Spring. He finally confessed Christ as Lord, and he got to do that right in front of his brother that had been praying for him. And that is just one story of this year. And I can't wait to see all the stories next year of people that are going to give their lives to Jesus at New Spring Church because I believe 2013 is going to be the best year New Spring Church has ever had. Believe it or not, and I know this might be hard to believe sometimes, but there really is a reason for everything we do here at, at New Spring Church. We don't ever just kind of throw something against the wall and see if it works. There's a reason. And the reason that we do this particular service every year is we've began to understand the principle that celebration leads to anticipation. Um, when we can celebrate what God has done, uh, then we can anticipate what God is going to do. Um, I, I don't believe, I, I, don't, I don't believe that God blesses you and blesses you and blesses you to get you to a point so he can then strip it all away and go ha 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 ha. I believe God is a good God that wants good things for his children. And I still believe what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 16 verse 18, that he is going to build his church. We are a part of the one thing that Jesus said, when I get to heaven, it's the one thing I'm going to put my hands to. The planets are spinning, everything's in orbit, everything looks good, so I'm going to put my hands to building the church. And we've seen that. 2012 has been the most incredible ministry year we've seen in the history of New Spring Church. But if that's what God did in 2012, what does he want 2013 to look like? Because he said in the scriptures, to, to whom much is given, much is required. So New Spring Church, I'm asking you, in 2013, let's get more serious about 100,000 than we've ever been before. And let me tell you why that matters so much. Because in that 100,000 number, for some of you, that's your mom, that's your dad, that's your sister, that's your brother, that's your friend at work, that's your husband, that's your wife, that's your children. Every number has a name, and every name has a story, and every story matters to God. And at New Spring Church, we're going to be a part of changing 100,000 stories in the state of South Carolina for the name of Jesus Christ. I cannot wait because 2013 is going to be the best year ever.